All right, folks, how's everybody doing? This is gonna be a quick talk about the uh, M1 Mac Mini. <clears throat> I guess it applies to any M1, but I bought the M1 Mac Mini. Uh, just uh, I got it in a couple, less than a couple weeks ago. So this is not a long-term review. This is just to tell you my experience so far. This is the um, eight gigabytes of RAM and uh, what is it, 512 on the uh, hard drive. Anyhow, it's a, it's the base model with a little bit more uh, SSD space. It was, uh, I don't know, like $90, $90 off or something. I bought it on Lazada, I'm here in the Philippines. So since it was on sale, I went ahead and pulled the trigger because I'm coming from, let me tell you what I'm coming from. I'm coming from a uh, 2017 15 inch MacBook Pro. It's got a 2.9 gig quad core Intel i7, 16 gigs of RAM and a Radeon Pro 560 uh, four gigabyte Intel hard drive graphics card, okay? Now, <clears throat> I use Final Cut Pro and most of my videos are at least an hour long in 4K 60 or 4K 30. I'm dealing with big files all the time. It's just the way I shoot. It's what I do. So I'm dumping two to three hours of footage into the timeline, you know, chopping it down to about an hour. I've been using this laptop for years. This thing is burned up. The battery swelled up to the point that we ripped the batteries out. So it's not even a laptop. It's a it's a desktop. You unplug it from the wall, it quits working. It doesn't want to work when it's hot. I live in the tropics, it's always hot. This thing will work if I put it in an air conditioned room, kick the air con down low, it'll still work. But obviously <clears throat> that wasn't ideal for me, so I wanted to upgrade. And I was on the fence about whether or not to go with the M1 now or wait for the M1X or the M2, whatever's coming out. But my computer's on the on the on the on the brink. It could go down any day. So I said, all right, this one's on sale. Let me pull the trigger. And the reason I went with the mini, okay, like folks, I don't even have air conditioning in my living room here. You know, I've been living in the tropics for a long time. I'm used to the hot weather, but computers do not do well in hot weather. So I was looking at thermal dynamics and I decided on this because this has a fan, it sits to itself, it's not connected to the monitor, so you can separate those heat sources. And, and I just figured that, that dealing with hot weather, it would be the best option. The, uh, I, I would prefer to go with the uh, MacBook Air, but it doesn't have a fan. It just radiates the heat, that's fine if you're living in most environments, but not when you're living in the tropics and uh, your living room doesn't have an air conditioner. So that's why I went with it. I was so excited about it. But I have been less than excited, less than satisfied, and frustrated <clears throat> with this uh, M1 chip. And I'm gonna tell you why. The only thing I'm concerned with is Final Cut Pro. Everything else, uh, I don't really use Photoshop, I don't use anything else that's uh, in intense on the CPU or the memory other than Final Cut Pro, because I produce videos every day. So let me tell you the bottom line up front after that long introduction. If you are chopping videos, if you're a YouTube person, if you are using Final Cut Pro, it's my opinion, do not buy this M1. Wait until the M1X or the M1 II comes out. There you have it. I, I don't care if you go with eight gigabytes or six gigabytes. If you're in the market for a new computer, I think at this point they're gonna come out uh, in a timely fashion to where it's my opinion you should wait. Do not buy the M1 if you are running Final Cut Pro or any of the other uh, editing programs for video. There you go, that's my opinion. Wait and get the latest and greatest when it comes out. If you are the average person and you're not using a, a Photoshop or you're not chopping hour long 4K videos, well, this will probably be fine for you. Buy the cheapest one you can get your hands on 
and if you're just checking emails and surfing the web and watching YouTube videos, that's a great little computer. It does it well, it's, it's quick, it's efficient. You're in the Apple ecosystem, uh, very cheap. But let me say it one more time. If you are chopping video, this is not the computer for you. I watch so many YouTube videos doing my research because, you know, when, when you're chopping videos, it's all about time. And everything that takes time just extends your workflow and your workday, so to speak. And so I was looking at this device right here to chop my time way down from this uh, Intel Mac. Now, you know, it is an i7, it's uh, 16 gigs of RAM, so it's not an antique machine. But I was looking for this thing to just smoke that laptop. And I'm here to tell you, that has not been the case so far, okay? When I first pulled it out in my first video, I was just waiting for that thing to smoke through it and render it. It was slower than this laptop right here. I don't care what the benchmarks say and what all these people who are trying to sell you a damn Apple computer on their affiliate links say. I didn't put a stopwatch on it, but I do this every day, and I'm like, what the hell is taking so long with this damn thing? It took forever. Then I connected my iPhone 12 mini. It took forever to download the, uh, the footage into this thing. Then I exported those photos into a file and it took even longer time. I said, what the hell is going on here? I'm going backwards in what I wanted to do. You know, if something should have took me an hour by buying this M1, I thought it was gonna take me 30 minutes. Uh, you, you know, somewhere in there. It's taking me more time. With that said, here's the frustrating thing that I cannot figure out right now with Final Cut Pro. And I didn't pay attention to this on the first videos. Now, I know it wasn't doing it on all the videos because I was watching it. Maybe the first ones it was. Some of them it, it does not. But I'm, rend I'm, I'm working on uh, burning a video. Burning, rendering, finalizing, whatever you want to call it. It's a, a two-hour video, 4K 60 footage, so it is very intense. But the, it says the user is only using just say less than 10%. It'll fluctuate between eight and 10%, 10% of the CPU. So there's 85% of the CPU that's idle. It's not using the majority of the CPU. So this thing has been burning for a long time and we're only at 11%. I left it burn last night. It never would render It just share fail, share fail. And then you look at this and you're like, why is this thing only using uh, less than 10% of the CPU. I don't know. If it were in the middle of the day when, when it's hot as heck in here, I'd understand it. But I did this at night and this is early morning. <clears throat> it's in the morning, it's cool in here. It's not a temperature issue. The thing's not overheating. Uh, I tried deleting Final Cut Pro, reloading Final Cut Pro. Uh, I've tried different settings on the render and that. I just cannot get it to use more Roughly 8.71% is majority, like 8% is what it's using the most of the time. Um, and then if you go over to RAM, let me talk about the RAM for a second. Uh, it's only an 8 gig RAM and it's using roughly around uh, 6 gigs of RAM with just Final Cut Pro open. So I think I'm okay on the RAM. Uh, according to this but now if you open up Google Chrome it maxes out the RAM you cannot have Google Chrome open with Final Cut Pro it maxes out the RAM then it goes into that swap memory and I'm not a computer guy but I, I, I think it's safe to say that there's not enough RAM if you have two applications open and I'm not talking running a video I'm just talking open uh, Google Chrome with a tab and be working in Final Cut Pro and it's maxed out to eight gigs of memory. Okay, so that tells you if, if, if you're gonna run video on this M1, you really need the 16 gigs. I mean, that's common sense, right? Um, but 
the problem is not that. The problem is that the CPU will just not, for whatever reason, use the full capacity of the CPU and that equates to time. <laughs> it equates to time. So now I've started over. It is going. It's at 12%. But what percentage did it go to last night before its share failed? It probably spent two, three, four hours, made it to 60% and then share failed. So what I'm going to do, sit here and wait <clears throat> another two, three hours. I'm going to go run some errands and come back to the same result. Uh, Apple, I'm, I'm not impressed. This is brand new out of the box. The only software I added to it was Final Cut Pro. Um, you know, this thing should work and it doesn't. So there you go. My recommendation, if you're a video guy, do not buy the M1. Wait until, now look. If the, if the new computers weren't coming out, I'd say, okay, buy it, get the 16 gigs, definitely, and roll the dice. Maybe it'll work for you like all these other people on YouTube say. Uh, but if, you're, if you don't have to have a computer today, I would wait until the new ones come out and get, obviously get at least 16 gigs of RAM. Because on this old machine right here, um, I've never had... Uh, any real problems other than until I just burn it up and it started overheating and the batteries got bloated just from old age and overuse and just use and abuse so I'm sitting here thinking you know what should I do should I okay when I bought this thing I, the reason I didn't get the 16 gigs of RAM is because it was cheap it was on sale and I said look I'm gonna take I'm gonna roll the dice if the thing works, okay, I save some money. If not, I'm just going to use this as sort of the the uh, family room, the the living room computer, and then I'm going to pick up the the next iteration and max out the RAM, whatever they offer. Uh, so it's not a total loss. Um, that's just the way I thought about it. Instead of going out with the 16 gigs and a one terabyte drive, and then finding out it didn't work, then I was in, into it for a lot more money. So that's why I went with the cheaper. Let me roll the dice, see what I think about it, and uh, you know, and go from there. But then in the back of your mind, you're like, uh, Intel chip has always worked. It gets hot as hell, but it always works. And here we are with the latest and greatest, and it's letting me down to the point that I'm doing this video because this is wasting my time. So how do I multitask and be productive? Do a video and tell everybody, if I were you and I'm a video guy, don't buy the M1. That's my opinion. Maybe there's a fix, but I've tried every different way to get this thing to render differently, to use more of the CPU. Again, it's not a temperature issue. I can understand if, if it were 100 degrees in here, okay, yeah, it's going to throttle the CPU down uh, to uh, keep it from overheating. Dissipate the heat, let the fan catch up, got it. That's not the case right now. So that's where we're at, folks. I'm fighting with this video, trying to get it to work when it, you know, in my mind, this thing should have been, been done. That's why I upgraded but something ain't playing well. Okay, another issue. When I first got it, I could not get any of the other devices to uh, do AirDrop with it. Just could not get it to work. From an iPhone 12 mini, which is new technology, the old laptop, or a uh, couple year old iPad Pro. None of these devices would connect to that device, but they would talk to each other no problem. Couldn't get it to work, and then all of a sudden, magically, it started working. So knock on wood, I can airdrop stuff to it right now. You know, I had moved it around, positioned it, just could not get it to work. Uh, you know, just another disappointment. So I don't know what the deal is, but Apple, I'm just, you know, I'm just not impressed. I, you know, look, when you, I read another article where a guy was having the same problem, the exact same problem trying to render, trying to burn a uh, YouTube or a Final Cut Pro video and his system was doing the same thing. He said he contacted Apple 
And the person he talked to, he said, I guess it took him 10 times of getting transferred to somebody that speaks English. And the person that he finally talked to didn't use Final Cut Pro. Didn't know anything about Final Cut Pro. And so his comment was, hey Apple, maybe you wanna train your employees on your own software. So it's useless to call Apple in my book. You can eat the same run around, have to talk to somebody in India. Um, I know how to use the program. Okay, I've, I've published over 800 and something videos, all, uh, mostly 95% on Apple software, either iMovie or Final Cut Pro. I know how to use the software. I don't need a tutorial. Okay, what I, what I need is a, is a freaking computer engineer to come in here and tell me why the damn CPU is, is only using 8%. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> My son escaped from the shower. His mom was giving him a shower and he just ran in here to give him a big hug. <laughs> All right, folks, there you go. That's what I think about the Apple M1. Not impressed. Average person, buy it. Video guy, don't buy it. And I'm gonna sit here and just stay frustrated with this damn thing. You know what I'm actually doing? While it's burning, while I'm trying to get it to burn on the M1, I'm transferring the files over to a hard drive where I can use the old computer that's about to die to uh, burn the file. And what I'll have to do is take it in the air conditioned room, turn the air count up, and it'll go to work and it'll go to town and it'll get the job done. But uh, it's just like I wasted that money on this, this uh, Mac Mini. So I'm a little disappointed. A little disappointed. Folks, if you're not a subscriber, hey. Bottom right hand corner of your screen. Hit that overstay road sign. Get on board my train. Food, beer, visas, travel, bad behavior, a lot of beer drinking and barbecue. This is in the tech channel. But the fact that you're in the YouTube business qualifies you to talk about a lot of these things. At least the equipment you use. Because most of these dudes who do re do reviews, they, 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 they get the they get the product in, they open it, they do their little open box, they quote the fucking specs like a robot. They use it for an hour and then they render their opinion and they really don't know anything about it because they don't use that product, whether it's a camera or a computer or whatever. They're just trying to sell you some shit and get you to click the affiliate links down there. Got it, trying to make money. Um, but the people who really know the equipment are the people who use the equipment every damn day and they're experts on two or three pieces of gear. And so, I use Final Cut Pro every day. I'm an Apple guy. All my products are Apple. And uh, for some reason, it just don't want to work like an Apple product is supposed to work. All right, folks. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.